What's up? This is Tor Miller. I'm hanging out with Rob from Front Row Live. Check it out. Congratulations with the new single, All Time Low. This is another taste of your upcoming record that we will be expecting hopefully in the new year. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the creative process with All Time Low. And I love the vulnerability, but at the same time, I love the theatrical kind of experience that you kind of give us with this song. Uh, what was that writing process like for you during the process? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I had written, it's kind of a funny one with All Time Low. I had written it maybe in 2015 or something, you know? So it's an old song. Um, I wrote it with a friend of mine, Brandon Lowry. And it started from a time in my life where I was just unhinged, you know, just out on the town and really kind of devolving into like chaos. So I had to understand that part of my life, why I was acting in such a way. Um, and I always think like, as it has been in the past, that like the way in which I've been able to deal with my problems so to speak, are through writing about them. You know, it is like my cathartic moment, my therapy. Uh, so I wanted to talk about that. And then when it came down to the production of it, uh, which was obviously much more recent, we wanted to embody that sort of chaos um, that I felt during that time period, you know? And so it for it to build up and then just end in this crescendo of this kind of crazy noise section um, was something that was like important to me that the uh, sonics matched, you know, the uh, ethos of what the lyric was about. That's definitely one thing that really stuck out to me that, uh, you know, you start out with this just pianos and vocals and, and when you're the most vulnerable, we get to listen to that rawness through your voice because the piano is not taking over your vocals. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, the crescendo towards the end, um, that's where the theatrics kind of fall in for me. Um, how much of, of an impact um, did Adrian Simon have on how you kind of recorded the sonics for this record and how much of the input did you have on it as well? Well, it was like very collaborative. Like he and I, like we already were very tight, but like through the process of making this record, like truly became best friends, like so, so tight. And, you know, we just spent so many hours and so many nights up listening to music, listening to different records. He turned me on to so much stuff. Um, so it was really such a beautiful relationship. And yeah, there was so much back and forth. We would just listen to records. Like we kind of felt with that song, like certain things that uh, inspired it were, um, if you're familiar with the band like Suicide, uh, like Lower East Side Legends, um, we we always love the darkness of that. We like talked about the record being a mix of like if Billy Joel and Talking Heads and some of these other influences came together and made a record, you know, um, we always wanted there to be a darkness to this song because it really came from a very dark place. So adrian i think is an absolute genius you know and he's got this encyclopedic knowledge of music uh that's pretty awe-inspiring to me um and he just elevated my creativity and my uh and stretched my um sort of like palette sonic palette uh and Really, I'm so thankful to just have him as a friend, to be honest. So he played a huge part, but that is to say, like, I had just as much input, you know, and and ideas, and it was extremely collaborative, which was what was so fun about it, you know, and it felt very balanced. I love that you added the sax to this track, uh, an instrument that we only get to listen to if you really like listening to jazz. It, it doesn't really pop out much in any other genres. Um, what was the initial reasoning for adding the sax uh, to this track? Well, we were, we just wanted it to feel very New York City, you know? Um, and I think, you know, kind of dipping in and out of the jazz clubs in New York on a drunken night, you know, that's kind of the feeling of it. And we, Adrian and I both, uh, coincidentally, are like big Tom Waits fans. And so we wanted to have our own, like, little more modern kind of Tom Waits song. 
a drunken night on the town kind of thing. And so that was the inspiration for it, yeah. It definitely made me think about like uh, when you watch these like detective kind of. Yeah, uh, it's got the noir thing to it for yeah. sure, which is like what we felt as well. And there's a video that will come out for the uh, for the for the song in a couple weeks, and it's all black and white on film. It's like very much that. So we let we like pressed you know leaned into that you know. That's so cool. Um, now, this is the second track off your upcoming third record, uh, Generation of Me. And prior to this song, you released the title track, uh, Generation of Me. And I love how different it is from this song, All Time Low. Uh, personally, I loved how you pretty much packed your cadences with lyrics. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that creative process? And uh, did you find yourself doing this naturally or was this something that you kind of had to do a lot of trial and error to kind of nail it the way that you did? I feel like those pockets are incredible. Oh, thanks. Um, generation of me like is, uh, the song itself is maybe my proudest set of lyrics. Like if you really read them or listen and look into it, it's like, it's dense. It's filled with a lot of images. Um, and I think it kind of goes into something that was very natural for me when I was younger, which was kind of an issue that then I learned how to balance, which was trying to fit so much into a very small window, you know, lyrically. And because I had so much I wanted to say all the time, you know, and I think to the point where it got kind of in the way of the song. And I think Generation of Me hit that balance where it felt very right. Uh, and that's a song I wrote with Adrian. And essentially, like I had had I had like the first verse and I had the name of the song uh, already set uh, a few years ago when I was on tour. And it was just kind of like a culmination of all this shit that people would say to me all the time, because I hung around a lot of older people as an artist, you know, songwriters, producers. So you meet a lot of older people. And it just felt like whenever I'd be about like 18, 19, 21, very young around you know people you know 10 15 years older and i just felt like there was a lot of uh condescension that was sent my way a lot of looking down a lot of people saying like not taking me as seriously and talking a lot of uh shit about my generation and so i just felt like well, if you feel this way, it was sort of a middle finger to everyone. And just to be like, well, if this is how you feel, I'm going to be that times 10 and I'm going to own it all. And it's kind of a song that it's like, you need to love it to hate it. So I was very conscious with that song. I didn't want it to feel like me going on a tirade. as like some grumpy old person. I wanted to be like, I'm very much involved in this whole thing. And I recognize that, but isn't it sort of ridiculous, you know? Um, and so then when I was writing the song with Adrian, we had that like sort of, you know, what, which I think what you're referencing is like that super fast pace racing around the room. We just like had written the music to it and that descending part. And we had this guitar part that just kept hitting those, that rhythm. Dun, 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 dun. And I was like, well, it's just gotta be locked into the part. Like that was the only thing in my mind that kept coming back when I was thinking about the lyrics and like the the singing part of it. It's like, it's just got to hit that because it just felt so tough, you know? How would you say this song kind of set the tone for this upcoming record? It felt like there's no rules, right? It, it felt like Generation of Me, the song was a departure from what I had done in the past. I think I had worked my way up to this kind of rock thing through the records, but I think it just signified there are no rules. We're going to make in a very eclectic album, like genre doesn't mean anything anymore. We're living in a society or we're, we're living in a time period where it's like we're exp as young people were exposed to all genres of music at the click of a finger, you know? And so it's like, we've been listening to all this stuff. So we just figured why not just do whatever feels right and not question it, you know? And I think it was just a liberating thing, especially having been in the label world for years and feeling as though I had so many voices in my head all the time, so many people telling me, no, don't do this. And so I think Generation was just like a declaration of 
let's just experiment, you know, and have fun. During the creative process or even uh, the recording process or even the writing process of both of these tracks, uh, what do you feel challenged you the most? Like now uh, you're, you're on your own, you're listening to your own voice. Um, and of course your producer, Adrian, but um, what do you feel challenged you during this process? You know, I think that more than anything, it was because we were doing it on our own that I wanted it to be even better than any, even, like you always want it to be better than the last thing you've done, but even more so I felt um, uh, a pressure in a way that was self-inflicted uh, to make this the best thing ever. So I think like the challenge was, which I took on uh, very, um, very like head on, like I, I was into it, but it was still tough. Is like, is this good enough? Is it good enough? Like editing to a point that I had never done in my life before and trying to hold myself extremely accountable um, and never settling, like that was kind of the challenge. Uh, because in all reality, it's like, you have to just make yourself happy, right? And and that can be for me at least like the hardest thing and so i don't know i just didn't want to get lazy uh and make any excuses so i think uh it became just a challenge of like constantly editing rewriting rewriting to a point that like i almost wanted to cry you know or like adrian be like i think we can make this better I'm like, I don't know. and how many times we re-recorded vocals like we would have full blown vocals done on a track and then we'd listen back and we were like mm, i don't know re-record it again two or three times like we would spend two to three days each time doing that you know and uh so that was just i guess the thing where you just implemented this this idea of like nothing is good enough you know and that became the whole thing as you get closer to a release of a record do you feel like um or not necessarily a release of a record but a, the writing process of a record do you feel like you are trying to since this is kind of genreless like you mentioned do you feel like you're trying to step out of so many different boundaries uh to kind of create something more experimental during this entire album or for this entire album yeah you know like i think that i just wanted to feel a sense of freedom since it was that that's how I felt sort of leaving the label world is like, well, now it's just like whatever I want to do, you know? Um, and so I just didn't want to impose like too many guidelines on the, the, the writing process. And I wanted to do something that felt fresh uh, and I didn't want to have any limitations. So that was like a, a concerted effort constantly. Um, and I think it felt very liberating. It felt very challenging. Um, but I think more so ever, uh, maybe I'm like rambling on, um, uh, but like, I think more so than ever before I had this album finished and I honestly did not care what anyone thought about it, which was huge because I've always been a person who's cared way too much what people thought. And so it was kind of this weird thing of like, oh, I think I've done something here for myself for once where it felt like, okay, that, there's something to be said for that. It's, yeah, I just wanted to push myself in every facet of it. Yeah. And that must feel amazing uh, being able to do it for you for the first time in a long time. Um, now, next week you are going to have an LA show um, at the Hotel Cafe. So what can fans look forward to those that are going to be going to this to the show like what can they look forward to as far as your performance and um do you feel like you'll be testing a lot of new material yeah i'll be playing some of the new stuff for sure i think that um what you can expect is a very impassioned uh performance here because you know i was i was talking about this a little earlier today but you know like the these first few shows back from it like there's sort of a sense of like reinvigoration because it was like taken away, you know, and there was really that first glimpse of like, Oh, nothing is ever guaranteed in this life. I felt that especially to 
um when i was like left the label it's like you know to be grateful for it so with that comes extreme preparation unlike anything i've done in the past and so these shows are just like polished and um yeah it, i don't know what else to say it's going to be sick <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, congratulations uh so far with the new releases. Looking forward to this this uh this new record from you and um thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.